As many of you heard a couple of weeks ago, American Classic relaunched their brand with eight new tires. And I've got two of them right here. In 1982, American Classic was born by a gentleman named Bill Shook, who was a professional road cyclist. And he was producing components or making components that were pretty innovative for the time. Most recently, the brand was known for producing and making some pretty quality lightweight wheels. But unfortunately, in 2018, American Classic shut their doors. Fast forward three years now, and the brand is reborn. Under new ownership, they launched these fresh new tires and have plans on launching more components, including wheels. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about two tires, the Wentworth and the Crumbine, two tires that I felt like were more bike packing oriented and definitely very gravel centric. Let's do it. If you like what you see in our videos and wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, help support the YouTube channel, everything you see on bikepacking.com, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is bikepacking.com's annual membership, which obviously helps us, but it also includes the Bikepacking Journal, which is shipped to your door twice a year. It includes industry discounts on a variety of brands that we work with, and it automatically signs you up for monthly giveaways. So if you're interested in learning more about the Bikepacking Collective or just wanna sign up, there's a link below or you can click on this card right here. So what's the brand strategy here for American Classic? Well, it seems clear. Order a crap ton of units, market their product as a performance product, but on Amazon for a really, really cheap price. The year is 2021 and this just all makes sense. Whether you like Amazon or not, this is a smart business decision. But we're not here to talk about business decisions or Amazon. We're here to talk about how these two tires performed. American Classic has a variety of different layups and rubber compounds for their specific tires. But in this video, we're just gonna touch on what's in their gravel specific tires. Their 5S flat protection is a lightweight, full ply puncture and tear protection with a microfiber composite tread. And their G-Force rubber is said to provide excellent abrasion resistant, high tinsel strength, and good tear and cut resistance for off-road riding. So what does all that mumbo jumbo mean? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not a tire expert, so I'm not gonna define every single characteristic in their compounds. But what I do know with these tires is they're really heavy and they're also pretty durable. Both the tan and black sidewall have the exact same construction. The weight is not any different. This tire specifically is just dyed tan during production. So the sidewall integrity on both tires is, well, the exact same. So both the tires I got, I mounted to the same bike, my Salsa Cutthroat, and on the exact same wheels, my Industry 9 Trail 270s, which is an aluminum rim with 27 millimeters of internal rim width. So while I couldn't see either tires on this rim with a standard floor, Floor pump, but I do have a tubeless specific floor pump where you basically can compress air and release it all at once. Both those tires mounted flawlessly using that specific pump. Spinning the first three tires right after I mounted them, they were straight as an arrow, no problems. But the last tire, this crumb beam back here, it had a pretty significant wobble to it. And while this is not uncommon in the tire world, it's always just a little frustrating because, well, you have to deal with a warranty process and what have you. Speaking of warranty, American Classic has a two-year manufacturer defect warranty, which I would assume this wobbly tire would fall under. So another cool feature from the American Classic is their road hazard replacement policy. So if you have a tear in your tire or you puncture your tire and it no longer holds air, they offer a 50% discount to replace that tire, which I think is pretty cool. All right, so talking about weights and widths of both tires here. So this Wentworth here, this tire came in at 719 grams and the other tire I have came in at 729 grams, which is under their advertised weight of 740 grams. And the Crumbine tires came in at 750 grams and 757 grams, which their advertised weight on Amazon is 735 grams. So there's no real weight trends for these tires. They're just kind of random. So just in comparison, the Terravel Rutland in the 47 millimeter category, so slightly more narrow than this tire, comes in at 655 grams. The two pairs of tires I tested were 50 millimeter tires. So right after I mounted the Wentworth tires, I measured them up and they measured out to just over 45 millimeters. So I rode them for a few days and I re-measured them and they measured up to 47 or just over 47 millimeters. 
So they're not quite 50 millimeter tires. And especially on some already wider rims, that's kind of a disappointment. So for the crumb beam, I thought they were going to be pretty similar. So I mounted them up and expected them to be 45 millimeters but they measured over 47 millimeters. After I rode the tires and flexed them in a little bit, the front one actually measured 48 millimeters and the rear one measured 49 millimeters. Overall, that's more of what I would expect with a tire. Most tires that I get, they're definitely not equal to what they say on their sidewall. They're typically more narrow, which is always a disappointment, but it happens. All right, so talking about the ride quality. These tires, as I mentioned, they're heavy, they're really durable, and because of that, they're super stiff, which makes for a slightly more harsh ride. The upside here is they're pretty durable, and when I rode them over rock gardens or sharp rocks, I definitely didn't think twice about it. Because of the stiff nature of these tires, I did mess around with tire pressures quite a bit, at times putting them down in the mid-20 PSI range to see if I could get that supple ride feel, but even then, I still couldn't accomplish a more comfortable ride. Plus, I was flirting with danger, and I didn't feel like it was fair on these rims. So I pumped them back up. I ran 33 PSI in the rear, 30 up front. I'm 155 pounds, probably 165 pounds with all of my gear on, my camera, my shoes, and what have you. So this Wentworth tire here was the tire that I was most excited about between the two because it's unlike a tire that I've really tested before. This crumb bean here looks awfully similar to the Terraval Rutland, which I have plenty of time on. The Wentworth here is made up of a tightly spaced, low profile tread that gradually builds and spreads as you get further from the center. This tire was really fast and it still did a pretty good job of gripping dirt. However, similar to most gravel tires in this category, it's definitely a stretch when you're using it on single track, but who doesn't love a little bit of underbiking? So the tire transitioned really great. You know, when I was riding pavement, got on gravel, riding gravel, got on pavement. Sure, it hooks up on gravel just fine, but once you get it to these transition lugs and finally the side lugs, it's definitely a little bit more unpredictable. For chunky paved roads or simple gravel, the Wentworth is an excellent tire. The Crumbine has a more aggressive tread and assumes the most aggressive tread in American Classic's new tire lineup. Unlike the Wentworth that has a almost continuous center tread, the Crumbine has a pretty tight center tread, but not continuous. And the tire's transition lugs are much more spaced out. This allows the tire to still roll relatively well, but also bite when needed. The lugs also have a little bit more depth compared to the Wentworth, which does slow this tire down a little bit. Feeling the treads on the tire from the side all the way to the center, they all feel very similar. They're not super soft, but they're also not terribly firm either. And that's reflective in the ride characteristic of this tire. It gripped dirt really well, but there was a breaking point when I was cornering. The other thing I noticed with the crumb bean was it did a pretty decent job while braking. And that's a good characteristic to have, especially if you do bring it out on some tight, twisty single track. I ended up using the crumb bean quite a bit more than the Wentworth, just because, well, I like to ride on dirt more, I like to ride single track, and I just like a little bit more confidence in a tire. And that's what the crumb bean offers. So with the ease of buying these online and at that $35 price point, American Classic is going to sell a ton of these tires. But the unique thing about these tires is they perform and ride much better than a $35 tire does. So that brings up a good question. Is this tire a good value or are other tires overly priced? Leave a comment in the comment section with your thoughts. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any other questions regarding the Wentworth or Crumbine, let me know below. Until next time, pedal further.